Minute Math, Minute Math. When you need help, you use Minute Math. Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math. And today we're learning about uh, evaluate algebraic expressions. Evaluate algebraic expressions. So, what is an algebraic expression? An algebraic expression is a collection of constants and variables joined together by the algebraic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Okay? So, we see different cases of it, okay? And there's as many ways you can evaluate those, and so let's just hop into some examples here. So, let's first do some classifications here, okay? So we're going to list some constants with these algebraic expressions, okay? Uh, constants and variables. So we're going to list the constants and variables for each algebraic expression. Okay? The markers are kind of dying here. So the first one here is, well, x plus 5. Okay? The second one is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And the last one here, the square root of 2m to the third n squared. Okay. Let me flip this way so I can see it better. There we go. So, well, what are our constants? Which ones are variables? So, for a, we have our label our constants. The cat scared me there for a moment. And we have our variables. Okay? So our constants, our first one for A, our constants is just going to be that 5. That is our constants. There's one. It's just the number. The variable there. The variable would be the x. Okay? For uh, expression B. And notice we say it's usually expressions will not have an equal sign. That's an equation. Fun fact. Okay. Constants here for B. Well, we actually have two. We have four thirds. And don't forget, pi itself is also a constant. All right. And lastly, uh, our variables. That's r. So r is a variable. Notice I didn't put the third, the third power, okay, that's power. The variable itself is just the r, okay? Now, c, our c uh, expression, the square root of 2m to the third, n squared. Our constants, well, we have one constant, that is the 2, and we have two variables, m and n. And this might be a little easier to see why I didn't have the third power here for the r. I didn't label that because it's not a constant or a variable. Okay? Um, it's the exponent and it's neither, so it's not listed. And you can see square root, the same thing as to the one half power, same idea. But lastly, for c, our two variables are m and n. Okay? All right, let's try another example here. I'm going to go erase this. So for this one here, we're going to evaluate the expression 2x minus 7, that's our expression, for each value of x, or 4x, for each value for x. Okay? So we have when a is equal to, oh sorry, a, sorry, not a is equal to, but a, x is equal to zero. For b, we have it when x is equal to one. For c, x is equal to one half. And for d, x is equal to negative four. All the markers are going. Okay. So for the first one, what we're gonna do is we take that expression, the two, x minus 7, and we're going to substitute 0 in for x. So 2 times 0 
minus 7. Now, 2 times 0 is 0. We still have the minus 7. And so our final answer here is just a negative 7. Let's go with B. We're going to substitute 1 in for x. So again, I like to write it out if I can, 2x minus 7. And now we substitute the 1 and put parentheses around it. 2 times 1 minus 7. Well, 2 times 1 is 2. You can see that. And then we have the minus 7. Then 2 minus 7 is a minus 5, a negative 5. Okay? Lastly, or not lastly, again, we take the expression 2x minus 7. And for c here, we're going to substitute 1 half in for x. 2 times 1 half minus 7. Well, 2 times 1 half, that's just going to be a 1 minus a 7. And 1 minus a 7 is that negative 6. All right? Our last expression here, again, let's rewrite the 2x minus 7 here. 2x minus 7. And then we substitute negative 4 in for x. So equal sign 2 times a negative 4 minus 7. 2 times negative 4, the negative 8 minus 7. A negative 8 minus 7 is a negative 15. Okay? Alright, so we got through all those examples. We're going to go do another one, but I'm going to go get a new marker. Alright, let's hope that these markers are a little better. So here, we're going to evaluate each expression for the given values. Okay? Evaluate, there we go. Each expression for the given values. Okay? So the first one here, <coughs> for A, we have x plus 5 for x equals a negative 5. Well, this one's pretty straightforward, right? We just substitute negative 5 in for x. So negative 5 goes in for that x value, plus 5. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. The next one, b. We have t over 2t minus 1. We're solving that for t equals 10. So again, same idea. Every single time we see a t, we're substituting a 10 in for it. So we have 10 over 2 times 10 minus 1. Okay? Well, let's go simplify that. Okay? 2 times 10, and the denominator is 20 minus 1. 20 minus 1 is 19. So we have 10 over 19. And that can't simplify anymore. So we're there. 10 over 19. C. C is 4 thirds pi r cubed for r equals 5. Okay? So 4 thirds pi r cubed for r equals 5. Alright? So again, for every single time we see an r, we're putting a 5 in there. So we have 4 thirds pi times 5 to the third power. Okay? Then we can simplify. Well, 5 to the third power is 125. And then 4 times uh, 125 is 500. So we have here, and put that through it, why not? 500 over 3 pi. And 3 does not come into 500. And so we're done there. Okay? Let me erase this and so get the, well, I can fit the next two, I think. Here actually. So D, that's a room here. So D is A plus AB plus B for A equals 11 and B equals negative 
8. Now, we have two variables, so we have two things we need to substitute in. So let's be careful here. Okay, let me go for the A's, I'll do one color and the B's will do another. Okay, so for A, just so we highlight it here, I'll do pink. Okay, so A is 11, so we have an 11 plus 11 times, being this yellow, B kind of looks like a green, it's close enough. B is negative 8, so we have a negative 8 here, plus B negative 8. Okay? And I'll finish this whole thing up with this tribe blue. Okay? So multiplication comes first. 11 times negative 8 is a negative 80. So this 11 comes down, plus, or plus a negative, or we just have minus, whatever you prefer. Let's Let's keep it as a minus here. Minus 88. And then the minus 8 comes down. Reading left to right, 11 minus 88 minus 8 is a negative 85. And that's our answer there. Lastly, we can get one more in here. I have to probably erase a little bit. Let's go erase this one. And let's go E. Substitute, or it's a um, Sorry, the square root of 2m to the third power n squared for m equals 2. Keep that in blue. And we'll use pink again here. And n equals 3. Okay? And then we'll use, let's use yellow for the others. So, again, take this expression and substitute. 2 in for m and n for 3. So the square root of 2, our m value, which is in blue, which is 2, so we have 2 to the third power and then n is 3. So we have 3 to the second power. Okay? So now let's go simplify all of this. Well, 2 to the third is an 8, so we have 2 times 8, and 3 to the second power is 9. Okay? So now we simplify 2 times 8 times 9 is 144, and the square root of 144 is 12. And there you have it. So let's go move on. So let's talk about formulas here. Formulas. Now formulas are used a lot uh, with equations in a sense, okay? So equations we know will have an equal sign, okay? And a formula at times represents different shapes maybe, different things in mathematics, and so whether it's like say velocity, things like that, right? Movement, or even shapes, surface area, volume, perimeter, things like that. So let's use a formula here. Let's use this formula. And we're going to use it for a cylinder. So as a classic joke is, I'm no artist. Let's draw a cylinder. And if you think it's a decent cylinder, make sure you hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. But this is our R, the radius, and we have the height here of that cylinder. Okay. The formula for the surface area of a cylinder, a right circular cylinder, all right, this is a right circular cylinder, is 2 pi r r plus h. Okay? And what they want us to do, remember, r stands for the radius and h stands for the height, is that we're going to be given two values, one for the radius and one for the height, and see if we can find the surface area in terms with pi, right, in terms of pi. So they tell us here we want a radius of 6 inches and a height of 9 inches. So all we're going to do is take what we know, substitute in, and find the surface area. Okay, 
So let's go back to uh, let's use blue. The surface area again is two pi, and then for r, we're going to plug in the radius, which is six. Okay, six inches. But we just leave it as a six here. Then again, we have r again in the formula. Now notice I put a bracket here. You could have done parentheses, but a bracket's kind of help because now I'm going to put a parentheses for the six. It helps make things clear, not so uh, muddled, things like that. And h is the height, and we they told us that it was 9. And again, I put parentheses around items that I substitute in. From there, we need to simplify. 6 plus 9 is 15. You can choose to get rid of the brackets and put parentheses here, up to you. And then again, 2 pi times 6. Well, 2 we multiply the 2, 6, and 15 together, and that turns out to be 180. And that's pi. And remember, they told us to put this in terms of pi. And so our final answer here is 180, or the surface area, the surface area is, eh, that's how I'm going to write the number first, is 180 pi. Now this is in square inches. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Again, uh, hit the like button down below and please subscribe uh, to our channel so we can keep making math videos like this. Have a good day. Minute math, minute math. When you need help, you use minute math. Minute math, minute math. When you need help, you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com